Good morning, everybody. We have Amos, and Laura, and Marcus, and Zena Day from Brand New Congress. Thank you for being mm -hmm. here, Zena. Hey, thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all the work you do with Brand New Congress. It's really awesome. Uh, AOC and many others, right? Mm -hmm. We had 31 candidates in um, 2018 across 18 states, and uh, we garnered 1.6 million votes total. That's primary and general included, but um, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, you were very instrumental in helping us get our first interviews with AOC and I believe Paula Jean and Amy. I, I only wish we had gotten Corey in there so we could have, you know, we could have boast the, you know, the full quadra there. But uh, it's it's been it's such a pleasure to meet you in person yeah. and to, to hear. Um, I, I think uh, I, we've got a slide, John. I think that's got a little bit of what Zana's background is and how, how yeah. she came to be. So how did how did you get involved with with uh, BNC thing? Oh, before I get to that, I wanted to thank you guys for talking with our candidates. You know, grassroots candidates don't get a lot of media coverage. Rachel Lears, when she covered Knock Down the House, you know, mm -hmm. she. Um, she had a, a guy, a zeitgeist, a, a moment in time, and you guys were able to capture that as well. And um, if it wasn't for media like Uphill Media and um, some other progressive media outlets that are out there that were willing to talk to our candidates, they wouldn't have gotten very much um, of an opportunity to to talk to people um, through through media. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. That means a lot. We, mm -hmm. we all work together. It takes a lot of hands. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, it gave us a very personal look at the primary as well, because we were meeting these people. And so we had vested interests in races all across the country, not just in our respective states. And we, you know, we, we cried when they lost. And I think everybody knows where they were when we saw AOC's face when she realized that she'd won. <laughs> and that was one of the most inspiring uh, moments of the 2018 campaign. And that kept us going, even though the ranks were greatly thinned after the primaries finished. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, so I'm really interested, though, Zena, in how you know, maybe c combine it with a little bit of a history of how Brand New Congress actually started and then how you came to be involved with it as an organization and how you've grown with it. Sure. So um, Brand New Congress began in 2016 during the Bernie Sanders primary. So BNC was around, I will say, just a little bit before um, some other orgs cropped up like Our Revolution and Indivisible. But we were definitely all part of this momentum that was um, gaining up behind progressive values in part because of the energy surge that Bernie brought, right? The idea that we can finally run without accepting corporate PAC dollars. Oh, mm -hmm. this is not necessarily impossible that we can ourselves reshape the fake face of, you know, Congress, the face of our local house, state houses, um, our school boards. But to do all of that, we actually have to vote and we right. have to organize strong grassroots campaigns. Mm -hmm. So BNC was founded on three fundamental ideas. If a if Bernie's elected, he's going to need a Congress to help get, you know, progressive policies passed. Mm -hmm. If Bernie's not elected and Hillary's elected, then we'll definitely still need <laughs> but if Trump's elected, then we're going to definitely need a Congress to hold um, the executive branch accountable in maybe a different way than we've ever had before, which we've right. seen is absolutely the truth. Um, with that in mind, there were a few people such as Corbin Trent and Shoykat Chakravarti. Corbin Trent is now the communications director for Alexander Cortez, mm -hmm. and um, Shoykat Chakrabarti is her chief of staff. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Rojas, who is now executive director of um, Justice Democrats, Nassim Thompson, and dozen others um, had decided to kind of go on their way and start this project toward the end of Bernie's campaign. Mm -hmm. So they launched a hundred city tour they went to 100 cities around the country and they asked people nominate who you think might be an organizer or someone in your district that you think could represent you and this isn't an idea that um a party helicopters in someone to represent them out of state you know right. carpet baggers that have 
already have a million dollars in corporate donations out of nowhere and they yeah. drop out they parachute out of the sky and run in your district i call them the corporate creatures yes <laughs> exactly. exactly the idea was was to have um the idea was i'm sorry excuse me mm. i'm a single mother by the way <laughs> <laughs> okay kid bombs oh, uh cat bombs I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um so the idea was to have people nominate folks in their own districts mm -hmm. to um, to run so that we as voters have a choice and we don't have to wait for the party to choose for us mm -hmm. And then they did a call for nominations, 10,000 poured in. AOC was someone who came across our desk. Her brother had nominated her. And um, Isra Allison, who was um, the former executive director of Brand New Congress, actually picked up the phone, um, made a phone call to AOC and said, hey, have you ever thought about running for Congress? And that's wow. sort of how all of that started. And uh, at the time she hadn't, she had just gotten back from DePaul. Um, protesting there and she was just phenomenal she had the spirit and the gut like so many of our other candidates did mm -hmm. and uh she decided to take up the mantra and run and built her own fierce um competitive campaign mm -hmm. against the fourth most powerful man in in dc that was inspiring and i like i we put up on the slide right now everything we do is done by regular people and that if that isn't just the heart of the progressive movement right there there is no creatures stand out like sore thumbs you know in a progressive grassroots movement you can just you can recognize them and they they don't last long and so everyone from like from here i mean we are we are you know four people from you know two countries and and four cities and and bnc is the is the same way and i'm glad you know you're in kentucky so it's like it's um it, regular people are doing this and not and not getting paid a lot if anything to do this it's where it's done from the heart and that sounds like that's where you came you started as a volunteer then with yes. BNC. so um bnc we are primarily volunteer led and our volunteers we're all over the country just like the this panel we have here today you know we we have folks who are expats who are living overseas who are american citizens mm -hmm. um but they're still wanting to help with politics we have um people who live on the west coast the east coast middle america and so we have a very diverse um community of volunteers mm -hmm. after the 26 2016 election i'm a reporter myself and a, a public relations i went to school for public relations and journalism in southeastern kentucky yay pr <laughs> i'm a pr professional oh you M M P R? no pr i'm in pr oh, as well. oh public relations yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> And I, because of that, you know, I follow social trends and it, if it wasn't already evident, it was evident to me that I, I deeply felt that Trump was going to win, but I also saw that there was something in deep need in our country for regular working people to represent us um, in our districts, people who don't accept corporate PAC money, people who aren't bought and sold. So for a year and a half, I had been working on a project called Big Purple. And what I was doing there was contacting people of all different partisan bents and, and trying to figure out what types of progressive values can reach across the aisle, mm -hmm. but also looking at possibly building up something myself that was similar to brand new congress well someone introduced me to brand new congress and i thought why reinvent the wheel <laughs> why not volunteer for this amazing organization who is already doing the thing mm -hmm. and so i volunteered in april of 2017 and it was it was shortly before they um had most of their summits and brought most of their folks onto their slate and i've been there ever since mm -hmm. Excellent. That's awesome. Well, I so tell us what what feels different about 2020 versus the the your original slate of 31 that uh, ran in 2018. Great question. So I think the biggest thing is that in 2018 this had never been done before, right? Mm -hmm. This is right. just a crazy idea. Concepts such as Medicare for all were considered fringe. Right. The Green New Deal, when we ran on that in uh, in 2016, and we were developing that platform, that mm -hmm. sounded like a pipe dream right. uh, to a lot of folks because they hadn't heard that before. Mm -hmm. So one of the there's a couple of major differences, and one of them is that 
we and other organizations like ours really helped to move the needle on policy. We were the first national organization to come out and say that we support the abolition of ICE mm -hmm. because it's expensive. People are um, not trained properly for the organization. And let's face it, it's just a brute force deportation machine mm -hmm. without any consideration for the structure of law, um, courts, protecting people, human rights. Mm -hmm. So he came out boldly and said, this needs to go. Right. And in 20, um, 2018, we found that there were several candidates that decided to pick up the mantra that were our candidates and mm -hmm. others across the country. But now when presidential elections, uh, when presidential Democratic presidential candidates are coming across the bar, they're being asked questions such as, do you support the abolition of ICE? Do you right. support Medicare for all? Mm -hmm. Do you support tuition free college? Mm -hmm. And it was organizations like ours that made that possible. Right. Because if it wasn't for this movement, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have moved the needle enough. We would still be talking about health care with an with a buy in option. Right. Right. Um, we would still be talking about trade schools only and we wouldn't be talking about funding our state universities. Right. Right. Um, so we were clear. talking about immigration reform, but we're mm -hmm. definitely not talking about abolishing ICE. So I think that that's a major shift. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing that I had discovered is that it wasn't only us, of course, that had candidates ran, hundreds of, of progressive candidates ran across the country. Mm -hmm. And so there's a tremendous amount of lessons learned. Because we really haven't done this before. Politics are used to being played in the political sphere where you start a campaign, you do 300 hours of call time to your corporate donors, you get a ton of corporate money, and then you pay the DCCC consulting groups to mm -hmm. come in and manage your campaign, right? That's, right. that's the structure that's been forever. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with grassroots small dollar campaigns is that we're trying to shift that dynamic, right? And right. at the new Congress, we're bringing candidates together, not just endorsing them with a rubber stamp, but what we're building is a community of candidates. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that this community of candidates can lean on one another. They can learn lessons from each other. They can be present for one another. Um, so what worked for your campaign in 2017, um, Corey Bush in Missouri first, or we can ask Amy Valella, you know, what worked for you in Nevada? What didn't work? And then the candidates can communicate and cross pollinate and learn from one another to build out stronger campaigns. Also, when you cast a ballot in Congress, when you cast your vote, you're not just casting it for your district, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You're, you're passing legislation that affects the entire country. Right. So why, you know, are we isolating all of our candidates to, you know, all of our representatives to their little, you know, their little area? And they're not having exposure with other candidates, really, to understand what's happening across the country so that they can actually come together and find a resolution such as the Green New Deal resolution that holistically approaches the problems in these country in this country. Right. And until we can do that, I think that um, we're not really going to get anywhere with legislation that, that has wide sweeping impact. I love that idea. And then we saw that when the freshman candidates came in, that they already knew each other. They'd already yeah. worked together. They already had a common bond. I mean, the one thing that came out of the movie was when AOC called, I can't remember who she called, was if it was Paula or Amy, about saying, look, we need to get 100 of us nominated to get one person to win. And just the support that they gave each other. And it was having you know, interviewed several of the people, seeing them all come together at in D.C. and putting on their purple shirts together for the same time and thinking, oh, my gosh, what a fun group that would you know be to be a part of and i would you know have loved to have been there for inst instance so that bonding and and that's and that's where and also for those of us who follow them like on progressive news shows we all feel again that that buy in to and and you know skin in the game for elections all across the country that makes us feel much more unified as progressives and gives us hope if if not for our district right. for other districts so yay what you say, Zena? Oh no, it's just exciting it's that exciting. you yeah. are inspired as well. You know, oh, just yeah. that 
because we we see it from the inside sometimes we don't realize because we know we're inspired (laughs) but the movie the movie has really shown me that knock down the house has shown me that this story is a story that galvanizes people Mm -hmm. and inspires folks we've seen tremendous um feedback from the film of -hmm. course when rachel lears the director started following us in 2016 she had a shoestring budget right a ramen noodle budget oh totally (laughs) she was traveling the country on that she's a mother um her husband would come with her they would they would take their little their little boy their toddler around Mm -hmm. with her and they just had, you know, like the, the heavy rig crew, one editor with them. And uh, sometimes it would be Rachel and her husband. Yeah. They're doing like this, this grunt work um, style journalism, true, mm-hmm. um, what I would call true um, documentary yeah. work, right? Yeah. It was so old school. It reminded me of some of the, the first 1970s documentaries yeah. that were during the, the green movement back then. Yeah. And Right, it rings of, of truth. And yeah, you know, John, do we have that the video that's on the Brand New Congress page that kind of introduces BNC and shows a little bit of the movie? About a minute. Yeah, a, give me one I would second. Love to, I'd up. love to play play that. Yeah, I think that I think that would be awesome. I mm-hmm. uh, I yeah, I just want to say for me, same thing. I uh, uh, I watched the movie last night, and I was it's bittersweet because I was amazed and inspired, and and at the same time, like I can't believe this is what we have to do to you know, save our democracy. It's, it's, it's sad that we have to go through this, but then it, I, I, my favorite feeling and all was like, you know what? Brand new Congress didn't get her elected and New York's 14th didn't just get her elected. Like all of America worked together and all these groups worked together to get her elected. And that's what it was like, ah, now I feel like I was really a part of that. And we just weren't some, you know, troops along the line. So it was really nice. Um, it's a movement it's it's definitely a movement no single group um it's going to take all of us it takes an army to get this done so it is absolutely and now what i'm trying to do is get that video set up because okay wasn't while you do that i've got a quick question for Zena. Good. Do that. um <laughs> uh, somebody in the chat wondered if paula jean is going to run for office and i'm friends with paula jean on facebook and i know that she's still trying to decide what she wants to do but are there other people from the first class that are that are um, coming back for a second run that you know of? There will be. I can't make any official announcements. Oh, okay. but will I know, I know, I'm sorry. Once I make it <laughs> official, so I would need to give them a heads up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we do. We have some familiar faces um, to be looking for that ran in 2020. Um, I can tell you there are some folks like um, Adrian Bell here, Anthony Clark, who have already announced Okay. There we we've interviewed we interviewed both of them. So check, yes. check. And so um we are we are definitely looking forward to making some more official announcements in the in mid May. Mm-hmm. We, we are currently, as I have mentioned, we do ask for nominations from across the country. So we did the same thing for in twenty the end of twenty eighteen and into twenty nineteen. And we've gotten hundreds of nominations. All right. Um, across the country. Oh, I see an AOC cut out there. But anyway, <laughs> um, yes. we, we have hundreds of nominations from across the country coming in. So right now what we're doing is something similar that we did in 2016, and that's picking up the phone and calling these folks. Right. And we have met some amazing people. We've talked to, so far our, in our round zero, we've talked to almost 75 people. Wow. Good. Um, and well, in our round one call, our first wow. phone call, our round zero, we probably went through almost 300 people. And so nice. it's, it's, it's a process that helps us to narrow down um, who we would like to bring on to the slate. Are you going to do a road tour again like you did last time? Not yet. Um, one thing that we definitely need is we need to raise some funds. We mm-hmm. saw that our fundraising had had dipped off in um 2016 after or 2018 after the elections which i had heard happens with every group um mm-hmm. and so we are looking to boost up some funds so that we can do some more on the ground outreach mm-hmm. but also so that we can have one or two more of those summits that like we had in the past where we can bring candidates mm-hmm. together go over trainings and um 
I, I believe that that has a lot to do with building yeah. this caucus is actually bringing these people together face to face. Yeah. As well. I yeah. think as you announce your slate, because right now it's kind of a blank, it's a, it's a blank slate. So people are, okay, what, what is it going to? But I hope you've got a boost. I know I added uh, BNC as a, a you know, small part of my monthly donation. But after, after watching the movie, it's like, okay, and I hope so. I hope that that is the movie does create a ground. You, you don't shout BNC loud, which is nice. It's not. It's it, it, it's obviously there, but it's it's uh, it's subtle. Um, but I hope that this is you know getting you're getting more in, you know inquiries and more attention because of the movie. So well, Corey Bush is our first endorsed candidate for the oh, win. Yeah. Oh, okay. so there's the news. Okay. Well, we've got the video teed up, and, and Corey opens it. So let's let's watch that. All right. Here we go. In chaotic times is when true leaders arise. It is not doing times of comfort. So many people aren't making it, and it's a direct result of the type of representation they get. The health of one community directly impacts the health of another community. We have flawed laws now that discriminate against people, that bar the success of people. All of us are regular, everyday Americans. We've got teachers, we've got veterans, we've got scientists. When I became a part of Brand New Congress, it was no longer just me running for Congress. It was us. We all do whatever we can to help each other out. We give each other advice, resources. By knocking on doors, by having conversations, by phone banking. Our legislators are bought. They ask for money from the same industries, the fossil fuels, the insurers, the pharmaceuticals. I don't have anybody writing me a $75,000 check. I have gotten over 8,000 small dollar donations. That's really the choice that we have right now. Power in the hands of thousands and millions of voters or a very few financial elite. Okay, to put donors before your community. Yeah. You go in as a group that has the ability to move a voting block. We will represent people and not politics. Repeal and replace Congress, all of them. Maybe not all of them. We'll keep five, <laughs> 20. That's awesome. I and if you that. guys didn't recognize at least a dozen people that we interviewed in that clip, you weren't paying attention. Because dang, it's like, oh my gosh, Lindsay, oh my God, Anthony. It's like, I know. That was <laughs> anyway. awesome. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, I just want to give a shout out to one of our volunteers, David O'Brien. He actually traveled the country to um, meet those candidates and to get that footage and yeah. the footage from our um, summits to put those that video together. So, Okay. Well, how can people help? Where do, I'm, I'm going to drop your, obviously, the band, Brand New Congress website in uh, chat, and that will be in the description of this video. Uh, but you know, what do you need? You know, is it really just money at this point, or do you need volunteers? What is, what is oh, your... Oh, yeah. Need? Volunteers, um, donations help, nominations. So we are currently looking for nominations. If you know someone great in your district that you would like to run, Brand New Congress is looking to run more women, more people of color, and more folks who are regular working folks who have had struggles in their lives. Um, maybe the community organizer that you know that used to be homeless and now right. started a homeless shelter. Right. Or um, someone who's a full-time nurse and they've started a um, freelance health clinic to help out their communities. Um, someone who's just an amazing full-time school teacher, a union organizer, whoever you might know that is, is out there in your community doing good work that you think would be a great voice for you, um, please go to www.brandnewcongress.org and under our nominations um, form, you can nominate um, whoever you would like, and we are going through those nominations right now. And so you may see a familiar face in a couple of months on our slate. That's awesome. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank well, you thank so much, Dana. Thank you Dana. so much. This, yeah. was, this was really, really great to get uh, caught up with you, and we are looking forward to seeing what your peeps do. Yeah, and you know, you know, folks can volunteer and nominate, on, or volunteer and donate online as well, and we are absolutely taking volunteers. We need people to help out with these campaigns. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people on the ground, we're looking for folks in their districts, but we're also looking for folks. There's a lot that you can do now um, just online. 
to help a candidate that mm -hmm. you can help candidates all over the country if you volunteer with brand new congress and you can help their campaigns you can reach out to voters you can help them organize so please hop on and um, volunteer with groups like ours um, to help this movement in 2020 because i think if we all band together then we can definitely win and move the needle excellent Absolutely. and amplify on social media you yeah, know follow all the candidates uh retweet what they say listen you know they're they are a great source of of news and perspective uh, from the grassroots. So that's a, an important uh, thing we can do for them as well. And John and I are talking to you, you know, we had mentioned about us helping candidates, you know, polish up their online interviewing, you know, setups and skills and things like that. And we, we're looking forward to, exactly. please, if, you, if someone needs help, send them our way, we'll help. Yeah, yeah thanks guys, yeah. that's awesome, yeah. Yeah. thank you. That's what we do. We need to build a bench, right? <laughs> and part of that is starting with the, you know, you got the minor league players that need to get into the major leagues eventually. Mm -hmm. So we need to get them yeah. all trained and ready to go. This is, it's fun. We, yeah. We're building infrastructure, everybody. This yes. Is, this is what it is, right? So. Well, you guys helped um, majorly last time. You were, you were some of the first media groups our candidates talked to. You mm -hmm. know, you were, I believe, the first interview that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had. Second. We were right Second. after oh, Jimmy, Dore, Jimmy Dore. Oh, she had Jimmy before you guys. I remember you booked oh. on. Okay. Yeah, we, like we ended up talking to her, I think, three at least three times. And, yeah. Uh, and she was, and every time she's just, she was just getting more and more powerful. So. And like I said, now she's out of our league. Yeah. We'll never yeah, talk to her again. Yeah. She's, she's <laughs> off. <laughs> right. I'm still so. friends with her on Facebook, but no, she's right. Uh, she doesn't she's need us anymore. She's busy. We should, but she, you know, she needs us. But she's, you know, we got, we got to bring up the next. Batch. Yeah, it's time to lift up the next AOCs, right and and this is, yeah. and together we will do that. Thank you so much, Zaina, for being here. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. Thank you guys for having me.